Hi, welcome to class. We're the only two right now, but the other ones will show up eventually, right? Hmm. I hate my life. I hate my life. Hey, Professor Sunrise Productions! Hello class, Professor Sunrise here. In today's class, we're taking a look at the side deck. As quite early on in my Yu-Gi-Oh! career, I noticed that I've never won or like did well at a tournament with a bad side deck. In a contrary belief, I never did bad at a tournament and had a broken side deck. I was like, yeah, this is perfect. So in my opinion, the side deck is a very, very integral part of like any tournament experience you will be having because you have to think about it. You will be playing with a side decked edited deck most of your games because at least 50% of the games you will play with them if you always go to 0002 or more probably than not, you will be playing more than half of your games with the side deck active. So it is very important to have a very, built, very, very well built side deck. So we will be going over my side decking patterns for German nationals, but we'll also be going over some general tips and tricks with the side deck. So without further ado, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave some feedback down in the comment section below and let's get right into the video. So before you go into building a deck, a side deck, you will have to make a meta call. Um, because you just cannot really prepare for like every deck which there's in existence for Yu-Gi-Oh! And in my opinion, five decks is always a very good number, depending on the format, of course. For example, in tier format, you probably only realistically wanted to prepare for three decks, tier, sprite, and then like anti-meta in the form of Lunder. And in this tournament's meta, I wanted to prepare for Kashtira, runic variants, mostly being a runic life twin, a little bit for higher, sprite Melfi, Labyrinth and Branded, these were the five-ish decks, I know that's six, but these were the five decks which I wanted to prepare for the most. In addition to that, you'll have to know what your deck's main strength and weaknesses are, where you can make some concessions and play less cards, where you have to heavily commit and play more cards. And then lastly, you have to know what are the engine cards you can take out of the deck, because you will really want to know exactly what you can take out in every matchup what you want to put in so that you have the perfect amount of cards for every certain matchups, not only when it comes to side decking out like staples or like non-engine cards, but also the engine cards. So let's take a look at all of the engines which we are playing in Dragons and take a look what cards we can actually side out and why. First of all, we have the Bistial package with me siding out Lubellians and Serenius every time Bistials are not very good. In this matter, this is only Kashtira basically, and I side out the one Lubellian because it's dead under Shifter and against certain matchups which also play Sister against Exo Sisters, I guess. Um, Shoutouts to Bena. You can also side out Lubellian and Serenia. And then we have Branded Beast and Regained. I always kept in a Regained because I want my Lubellian to have some very good uh, pushes and giving me some actual value. Um, of course, you can like bluff having it and the opponent would probably play into you ha still having a Lubellian target, but Regained is so good in simplified game states um, and it's just not really that bricky. So in my opinion, it is worth it to keep. But Branded Beast came out in games going second when I know that my opponent's engine can be handled without a branded beast. For example, against Kashira, um, I cannot really play still control past 10 one, so I need to have branded beast available to me to be able to play. You can also make the call that you just want to go for Borderland, but that's depending on a lot of times. But branded beast feels really solid against Kashira anyways, because you will only really deal with them if you have the answer to it, and then you still have to go into Borderland. And if you can't do that probably want to play on branded beast so i really like it in that matchup but against stuff like sprite you don't really need the branded beast post turn like post turn one because once they play into your board as long as the game say is simplified and you have a seal you will probably win or it's against certain matchups where it's dead for example against branded the branded beast can come out quite easily but you'll have to make a concession uh depending on your preference of how to play and depending on the deck you're doing next is the chaos package with safer chaos space you gotta know it uh, i don't have the Chaos Emperor in here, I have a Noctivision in there later on, I have a, a presentation, I write a Noctivision there because I'm gonna play that over the Chaos Emperor, but basically know that Noctivision is the exact same slot as Chaos Emperor, it's really just there for going first and having easier combos, uh, so every time I took out Noctivision in the presentation, it's gonna be a Chaos Emperor there, and Chaos Emperor is just not really a card uh, which you need going second, so a lot of times this will just come out because it's just not a necessary tool for going second and you'd rather have the slots, and then we have the Rocket Engine, I did side out the Ravine, the Noctivision comes with that, but that wasn't the Chaos Package, the Epsi Router, and then sometimes a Tracer, but in the middle of the tournament I noticed that having a normal summon is just really solid, and of course going second we still have like 3, 6, 7, 8 normal summons, so that's a little high, so you can in theory side out a Tracer, but honestly it just felt always so good to normal summon Tracer, because of um, before already mentioned uh, things like Book of Moon and Permanent, stuff like that, so the Tracer felt really solid, in a meta where Tracer is not as good, you could probably side out one of them. But for that, 
uh, you can still side that out, but definitely the Ravine Absarada package is really easy to side out in my opinion. After that, the Knock Division, because we will be siding out the Absarada anyways, and it's only really there for a searchable target for that. And in my opinion, that is a very solid stuff to side out. Not only is this really bad in the current meta, uh, you cannot activate it under a Rise Heart, uh, Runic Destruction is a card. It's also really hard to get into us already having to have two plays and going second, you probably want to go into a dark over um, a Romulus 99% of the time, and it just didn't feel like a worthwhile investment for going second. So these can definitely be sided out. And then of course we have the non-engine tools um, where you always want to swap in and out the goods with the bad stuff in there, uh, depending on the matchup. Of course, that's very easy to side, like to know what to side, but the engine is very important. So we have the Lubellion, we have uh, some Bistils if they're bad, we have the Branded Beast, we have the Ravine package and maybe a Tracer, which we can side out out of our engine, depending on what we're playing, of course. Now that we have all of that out of the way, we need to know what we actually want to combat. Of course, we have the five decks and especially the Kashira matchup, but we also have to take into consideration what people will be playing against us, and that would be Bistials. I made the call, which was probably incorrect, that a lot of people would be on Bistials and that it would be in every side deck, like at least two Magnum and one Drewsworm. It was not the case, but we heavily focused on that. So in our side deck, we have more Bistials, because Bistial with this Bistial basically comes down to who has more Bistials and us playing like all of the Bistials available to us, we should always win that. And then I have three talents. Not only is it a very generically good card, which we can play against basically everything, it also really helps in a Bistial War because stealing the opponent's Bistial and then having just a lot of Bistials ourselves going into a tomb gives us full combo through an opponent's Bistial, which is huge. Then we have a three Cosmic Cyclone. Really good card against all of the Runic variants and Labyrinth, which is um, welcomed into addition, as of course, um, outing Floodgates, and especially against Runic being like the only thing which I was scared of next to Kashira. Cosmic Cycling was a mandatory pick, in my opinion. Also, generically, super good against a plethora of rogue decks. Book of Eclipse, really solid card going first and second against Kashira. This was my dedicated side slot for that. And then I had two Nibirus. Uh, similar vein to uh, Triple Tactic Talent, this is kind of like a rogue killer and also against random decks really solid, but also really solid card to side and going first, just because having full combo plus nip is next to impossible for any deck to deal with. As you can see, there's no dedicated side deck slot for going first, no anti-spell, no D-barrier, no summon limit, just because I had to make a concession somewhere. Normally it's really solid to have a, a spot like that because playing 40 cards, no prosperity whatsoever, you have like a 30... 3% chance of seeing it and if you have this plus combo that's most of the time going to be game so opening an anti-spell going first gives you probably like roughly a 70% win chance. I had to make the concession there because I wanted to be able to prepare against my opponent's bestials against Kashtira and against runic variants while also still being somewhat generic for German nationals because I was sure I would be playing against random rogue decks so Nibiru was a very cute concession in my way there. So with all of that out of the way knowing what we can side out, what we can put in, what each role was in the side deck slots, let's take a look at all of my side heading patterns and so that all of these ratios will make sense for you. So first of all of course the elephant in the room we have Cash Cheater. By the way does this look like um like a school board, which you like, you like a tafel in German. I don't know what the, fucking know what the English word is. Definitely let me know. I kind of wanted to do that design. Anyways, first of all, the elephant in the room, Kashira. Going first, we do side out three Dark Ruler because this card is just dead. One Lubellian, one Serenity, because like I said, in matchups where the Bistules are dead, we really don't want to play draw more than two. We can always make use of one of them if we get shifted, of course. And if we have a normal summon OVF playable, we can definitely make use of them, but they're just not as necessary. We'd much rather have a quick launch than a Bistule, for example. And then we side in three Book of Eclipse and two Nibiru. Uh, these were very clean going first, especially the Book of Eclipse, just being a slightly worse Book of Moon is still perfectly fine. And then the Nibiru, if we draw, we can play accordingly and maybe make them commit a lot and then make them uh, punish them with the Nibiru very, very hard and then clean up the game after that because actually we are better at grinding than the deck. It's just so that the hard corners are so hard with the rice hard that it can be really hard. But Nibiru kind of fitting that role of like a very floodgate heavy of going first card while also being very solid going second definitely showed in this matchup. And then going second, we side out the Ravine, Absarada, Nocto, because we don't need it. And then still the Rebellion, Serenia, just because it didn't really make sense. Just like going first, to have these cards in going second, they become even worse. And then we side in three Book of Eclipse and two Nibiru again. The two Nibirus are not that clean, to be honest, going second. It comes down to what the opponent is doing. For example, if they go blind for a Rise Heart Pass game one already... Um, blind in a sense, of course, at the top tables, especially if you play rogue like me, you will, or like n not high, high meta, 
uh, the opponent sometimes will know that, so you have to take that with a grain of salt. But if the, you think they don't know what you're playing and they just go for a rise hard pass, you maybe don't want to put in the Nibirus and then put in Talents instead. Well, Talents is not crazy good for our deck. It can definitely work against Kashira, but these are things which you'll have to like decide on the fly. Um, it did sometimes happen that I put in Talents over the Nibirus and I used the Talents. It was fine, but overall not crazy. And at least in my planning, I went for this side decking pattern. As you can see, for Kashira being a very hard matchup and only having like realistically five cards which you can put in and out might seem bad. Uh, but you have to take into consideration that all of our main deck slots are already built to beat Kashira in the first place, apart from Imperm, which is not too crazy, but it's generically so good and it's decent against Kashira and it's really solid against uh, like Runic variants. Um, we don't really need that much to uh, to deal with them afterwards. So if you have nine main deck outs already, we go to 14 post side, which is really solid in uh, 43 cards. So because our whole main deck is built around beating Kashtira already, we don't want to over prepare our side deck as well, if you if that makes sense. For the next matchup, we have Runic Life Twin Sprite. Um, going first, we side out three rulers and we just put in three cosmics. Um, I thought that Runic Life Twin Sprite wouldn't play Bestials as much, and I wasn't too scared about Bestials in that matchup, especially because they just have that anti-synergy with the life twins. And if they do Bestial us, we can of course handle that, but then they have a problem of the life twin just not summoning something out of their deck. So they don't really get that free body that other decks deal they get. And of course, Runic just notoriously plays like up to six, maybe seven non-engine slots anyway. So we weren't too scared about that. And they would probably just evenly dark ruler us. So I'd rather just have a cosmic in there to deal with the fountain. This is not really a good side decking plan for going first, by the way. You'd much rather have something way more impactful. But honestly, I wasn't too scared about that matchup whatsoever because it's going to be a grind fest anyways. And then just having that random answer for a fountain seems fine for me. And going second, we side out the Ravine, Absorala, and Nocto package again. We do side out one Imperm because it's just not impactful enough. And we side out three Book of Moon because it doesn't really do anything against a Link Heavy board. So we have one, two, three, four, seven cards which we want to side out. What do we side in? Two Druze Worm, two Baldrick, and three Cosmic. I think you all saw it in the feature match. Druze Worm and Baldrick and Bistils in general are insane at breaking boards, especially Runic Life Twin boards. Druze Worm in overall is a very generically good going second card. Every time it's alive, it puts up so much pressure because it's a big beat stick. It can get, get rid of stuff in the opponent's graveyard and it outs something when it leaves the field. So it puts immense pressure on the opponent and it's really solid for that exact reason. And then of course, Baldrick is just a slightly worse Druze Worm and then Cosmic. Um, of course, to deal with the fountain, because like I said, it's the only really thing which scares me in this matchup is the runic engine. But generally, you can, if you prepare yourself correctly, outgrind that matchup, especially. Against runic sprite Furhire, going first, we side out three Dark Ruler and three Book of Moon. Uh, Book of Moon is just way better against Life Trend sprite than it is against Furhire sprite runic, just because they want their body, like their level 2 body on the board, way more. It's also just a little better overall against them. So I didn't really feel the need to play that going first against them. And not only that, also I feel like Tenants is way better against Furhire going first than it is against Life Twin because I expect them to have a Bistials way more than I expect Runic Life Twin. So the Talents made more sense and worst case we can always pitch it for and Ravine this card in our combo or we can keep it for a turn 3, a turn 4 because the matchup is inherently very grindy. And then of course the Cosmic, same reasoning for the Runic Sprite. Life Twin, oh my god, this is so hard. Uh, just because it's a uh, grind match and fountain is really the only thing which we are scared of uh, from the runic engine if we can use a cosmic to deal with the fountain we basically already have the um the sprite engine handle just because we're way stronger the fur higher engine itself is also not that all too crazy and we can deal with it with a very solid spot removal then a cosmic on the fountain is going to be like this the cough the seal on the coffin and just ends their whole game plan basically then for going second, we start up the Ravine, Absolute Nocto package again. One Imperm just because it's not too crazy impactful and they don't even go for Gigantic a lot of times, so we can still get out our Bestials. This is only where Imperm really uh, comes in crazy. It's still a very solid card, but it's not high impactful. And then three Book of Moon, they also end on a lot of Link Monsters, so Book of Moon is not all too crazy apart from hitting their... A mannequin cat, but you can usually play around that quite effectively. And we do side in two Druze Worm. It's alive going second. It puts up a lot of pressure. I really like it. Deals with the mannequin cat also quite decently because if you have Druze Worm on the board, the Chaos Hunter is not all too crazy. We do put in two talents because um, their board is not as easily uh, beat in the battle phase. So we will probably be in the main phase a lot of times and then using their stuff on the field. Talents is just way more alive. 
against runic life twin sprite a lot of times i will just go battle phase and deal with all of their stuff in the battle phase and talents isn't actually alive and talents is really sort of going second for our deck just because we are inherently so gassy and have so many pushes via all of the bestials quick launch normal summon chaos base levy so there's just a lot of stuff which you can draw into and talents is just really solid for us but like i said against runic life twin it's not as good just because we will be playing in the battle phase we basically lock ourselves out of our talents if that makes sense and then of course deal the three cosmics deal with the smashers deal with random side deck cards and deal with the fountain of course is all really really good that's one two three four seven and we have seven here as well so that all comes down sprite melfi the next thing was a little more scared about that than I was scared about playing against other sprite variants just because we definitely have to see like a, like an equalizer here against them to be able to play just because their board is more all in. Going first we side three ruler of course it all makes sense and three imperm is just not as solid against them and um, we're not really scared about them going into gigantic um, because if they go into that they will probably be winning already and then we have three talents and three book of moon. Uh, they will play probably some form of hand traps and bestials no matter what. So Tenants is really solid against them. And we can still discard it, like I said. And then 3 Book of Eclipse. Similar to against Kashtira, it's just really solid. And in this matchup, it's actually better because uh, it deals with a beaver. Uh, we can make them commit a little and then Book of Eclipse them later on. Probably won't be doing that and will always be hitting the normal summon. But it's just a really solid disruption against them. And then going second, we side out the Ravine, Absurada, Noctivision again. We do side out one branded beast because it's not really all needed going second after we've broken their board. Um, so we don't really have to play that. If you've seen in the feature match, I'm a huge fan of still having a branded beast in there. Um, but that's mostly for grindy matchups or matchups like Runic where they can hit our deck and we want to have two targets for the branded uh, spell traps. But against Sprite Melfi, the game is probably not going to be all too grindy. We can deal with their board quite effectively and afterwards we just need a seal so Branded Beast is not necessary. 3 Book of Moon, it's basically just an Imperm but it doesn't really impact the board all too crazy because we're not playing stuff like Evenly. Um, Book of Moon or like Imperm's effect are just less valuable for us because we don't need to bait out their spell trap negate and then Evenly them afterwards. So the Book of Moon just doesn't do enough going second. It's fine, but Imperm does basically the same thing while also being able to hit their Gigantic or like to hit their engine their turn. And then we do side in two Druze Worm, three Talents and three Book of Eclipse. Book of Eclipse basically does the same thing of Book of Moon, while Book of Eclipse can just go like plus two, plus three and hit like a rat, you can hit like a Mannequin Cat, hit like a Melfi card and can just hit way more than Book of Moon. And it basically is like just a better version of Book of Moon against them. So we rather have the Book of Eclipse in there than a Book of Moon. Then against Branded, going first, we have three Ruler, three Book of Moon, go out and then two Druze Worm, two Baldrick, two Nibiru in. If they play into our board, they will almost always play into Nibiru. And if not, we probably just do win no matter what, because we just bestial all of the follow up. They cannot really kill us. And we have a seal to follow up as well. And then two Nibiru is also like a light target for Chaos Base. So in a pinch, we can discard it. And like always, we can discard it with Ravine as well. Here we start to notice a trend where we see that our cards, which we play against Kashira exactly, are starting to become like a hassle for us in the game one because they're just not all too crazy. But because our deck is inherently very solid against the decks where Book of Moon and stuff like that struggles because we play Bestials, we kind of have a, uh, that that our non-engine cards become dead or like very undesirably. But then our Bestials turn into the non-engine cards, so we still have very effective ways to combat the opponent's engine while our non-engine cards are actually dead. So we are still kind of fine. Branded is a very solid matchup. So our non-engine cards being dead going first, game one or like going second is fine. As long as we have tools to side them out, go opposed side, we are should be fine. And we do have that. We side out one Ravine, one Absarada, one Nocto. Wow, that happens so often. One Branded Beast because it's basically dead in that matchup unless you can hit the Branded Lost. It does nothing. And the Three Book of Moon, it's just too, uh, too little impact. And then we do side in two Druze Worm, three Talents, and two Baldrakes. That's seven, three, four, five, six, seven. All comes down. Um, you could argue to side out Dark Ruler, but because we play so many Bestials, the Branded player is 99% of the time not going to go for the Puppet Lock anyways, and will just try to make like a very solid board. Maybe cheese a win with a, a Dragoon, and for that, we just want to have like a Dark Ruler. You could also argue to side in Cosmics. It can hit a Fallen of Alba, uh, like a Branded and Red, but we can deal with that quite effectively with our bestials already but it can uh, side uh, like kick out the super poly which is the only thing which i'm scared of in the matchup but because it's just a chance and they actually have to see it and then we have to snipe it out with our cosmic that wasn't good enough i'd rather just have bestials have the most amount of engine slash non-engine available to us 
and then talents because we are so gassy they will probably use their Druze worm or like their own bestials to hit us so in my opinion it makes sense you could also argue to put in three tal uh, two talents over the nibirus if you've seen them use bestials but because we already play so many bestials we don't really need to see that but if they have like play bestial Baronet and you know that and you go first you definitely want to put in the talents into that but I didn't expect them to play Bistial Branded. So I, I, in my side decking patterns, I thought about playing Nibiru in a tournament. I never played against Branded. If I've seen them play Bistials, I would have probably put in the tenants over the Nibirus going first. And then lastly, we have Labyrinth. Uh, is it even correct, correctly spelled? I don't know. Going first, here we noticed our non engine just becoming dead, basically. We started three Ruler, three Book of Moon, and one Imperm. Not because Imperm is really good, but because we just don't have anything more to side in, and we side in. Drew's Rim, Baldrick, and three Cosmics. Um, the siding cards are fine. We'd like to have more cards, of course. We'd like to side out all of these cards, but we just don't have the tool. And Imperm can at least be used for like their normal summon, or in some very weird scenarios, you can hit their lady with it. Probably not gonna happen, but like there's nothing else which we can do. All of these cards are even worse. And then going second, we side out three Ruler, three Book of Moon, and two Imperms, and we side in the same things plus one talent. Uh, just because while talents can be alive going first and going second, sorry, is not really all too crazy. So I'd much rather just sit on one talents and one imperm because both of them can have applications. I'm never going to draw more than one of them. So I'm never going to brick on them in multiples. And at least sometimes they are both come up. If all of the cards are like really bad in the matchup, but they still can be alive. I'm very fine with just playing one of them post side if I have a very good matchup anyways, like I have against Labyrinth. So that I cannot brick on it in multiples. Uh, and worst case, it's probably going to be alive and I get, can get some value out of it. Talents is probably better than Imperm, um, but Imperm can be very solid on like a lady, which is like one of their best starters. So it is very iffy. If you see them play Bistials, for example, because they're playing like the, the Ikea variant, which sometimes plays Bistials because it is a hand trap deck. Of course, the talents come in going second. Going first, I am very fine with just starting all of the Bistials, um, but going second, if they play that, you can maybe go for that. You could argue to also play talents against the Ikea version going first, but it's probably not going to be ideal. They do play hand trips, but these cards are like really solid going first. Maybe you can side out two more imperms for uh, the talents, but that's like personal preference. And because a lot of people are on the floodgate variant right now, I didn't really think about that while making my side decking patterns. And that's basically it for the whole side decking patterns. Um, I hope you could learn something from them. I'm going to quickly go over them again so that you don't have to go through the video to see them and maybe uh, like screenshot them or whatever. Uh, we have that all neatly down here in the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed today's class and could learn something from not only playing Dranglings and side decking, but also if you play something else and you want to go for some side decking. I hope you had like a very quick and easy tutorial for that. Class is dismissed. You guys are free to leave. Professor Sunrise out. P -p -p Peace.